How Should We Then Live? <laughs> that was the name of the book I was thinking of the other day. Francis Schaeffer. How Should We Then Live? And <laughs> I can't hardly remember a thing about that book. I read it a long time ago. The only thing that I remember was that that was where I first heard uh, cottage industry, that term. And that really clicked with me at that time. It really clicked. And uh, I see three things that we need to do as a nation, as people on earth. There, there are three things that would change everything. Number one is recognizing the sovereignty of mankind. It's just, it's the way we are. We have to embrace it. Not so that there's no, nothing that governs your life, but it's self-governing. And the basic understanding of sovereignty is one that protects everybody else. Because as a sovereign, you don't want anybody ruling it over you. You're not going to rule it over anybody else. You're not going to dictate things for their lives. Make choices that affect them. That's See, that's why you wouldn't steal from somebody. wouldn't be recognizing their sovereignty, it'd be a violation of that freedom and liberty that you also have. And by recognizing your sovereignty, recognizing everybody else's sovereignty, it's really quite simple. That's why loving your neighbor as yourself, that's how you do that. You love yourself, you love your freedom. And so you love your neighbor's freedom. And you wouldn't want to impede on your neighbor's progress as long as he's not doing something actually damaging to you or in violation to your sovereignty and your rights. And, you know, it, it ends up being pretty simple. It's not about laws on a piece of paper, it's about respect. And so, if your neighbor's over there burning some nasty garbage and the smell's coming over your way, and it's offensive to you, then you definitely have the right to complain. You don't ask them, hey, you know, hey, uh, and hopefully they wouldn't want to subject, subject you to something like that. And you wouldn't need a law to protect you that says no burning garbage. But you know, and there too, sovereignty like that requires forgiveness because we're all going to make mistakes. And when we trip across somebody else's, what they're trying to do and we mess something up or get in their way or uh, violate, you know, to impede their progress in some way, you know, then 
hopefully they will forgive you <laughs> uh, hopefully you would forgive somebody else too and really say oh it's all right man we're, 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 you, ain't, you didn't wreck me <laughs> you didn't ruin everything <laughs> Uh, somebody does something, somebody acts like they've ruined everything. You even have heard the term. And, but sovereignty, understanding that, for one thing, solves a lot. And it is exactly what the Declaration of Independence was talking about when it said we were endowed with these certain rights life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness and that's pertinent pretty simple so recognizing the sovereignty that's one thing and there's two other things that I think are vital to uh, having a much better country and solving the vast majority of our problems in our society. This is simple stuff. But it's very, it's a big deal. Sovereignty is a big deal. It's a foundation of who we are. That's why I went on about the tetrahedron because, see, it stands on its own. And even when you take something like this, you t toss it down on the ground, no matter what side it lands on, it will be standing on its own. Point up. And and again, it's not something that you can build buildings out of as far as cut stone it's useless as a building stone it doesn't work but then we're not stones we're flesh and blood and it's interesting that when you go into the tabernacle the sovereignty your own sovereignty then you come to these other structures of the octahedron, the pyramid, and the cube. Sovereignty rules. It's above all. And the other, that's the, sovereignty is the tabernacle of God. God doesn't live in us unless we are sovereign because he is sovereign he wouldn't wouldn't mix well now I'm not completely accurate about that because people are enslaved and everything God's with them and that but not uh, that's not what God desires for people slavery no way that was the thing of the world. But sovereignty is an individual thing. Collectively, there is a congregation. And, but the tabernacle isn't the tent of meeting. It isn't the tent of the congregation. It isn't the temple that Solomon built. The tabernacle is your life, my life, and the, the tent represents your life. You dwell inside of the tent. That is what tabernacle means and specifically 
the shape of a tent as you would recognize it in the distance, <laughs> which would be <laughs> that that point. <clears throat> And uh, if we would recognize that sovereignty, it would make a big deal. It's vital. Another thing that's vital is the creation of money and how that works. There's people saying we don't need money, money's evil, and all this stuff like that. And uh, no money, money works. We proved how well that it works and, and is useful for means of exchange and the value of your labors, something to be paid with that you can then turn around and purchase anything that you want with. It should be that. You could buy anything or just about anything with money. Nothing wrong with that. The problem with money is that we have this sect of people who are issuing the money out and they're not giving any money off of a pile of money. They're not giving any wealth. They're not loaning any wealth. But they're issuing the money because they're issuing the money. Then all the money ends up going back to them. The majority of it. Now, you know, all the IRS money, all the revenue monies. It's going into their system. And... So there's money keeps getting loaned out. They they put some more money into our system, but we keep paying all that money back. And when they have that money, they don't owe it to somebody else. Where they gotta pay back, their wealth grows. That's exactly why. Like 1% of the people owns 99% of the wealth, basically. Because it all keeps getting paid back to them. They never gave anything. And it's beyond, you wouldn't want to believe it, that it could possibly be that bad. Because for one thing, it seems like we're not doing that bad for being robbed that bad. And I say that's because that's how great God made us and how awesome people are. And some will say, ah, human beings, look at them, they'll just muddle through it, anything, you know. And, you know, I see that as a positive thing, not as a negative thing. You know. Ah, look at them dumb humans, they won't even stand up for the rights. <laughs> you know, they... They, they, they don't even have time. They don't even know generations have gone by where the their whole economic system and their lives have been undermined. And little by little, there used to be real wealth being grown in this country real quick. They continue to have to put a stop to it. They had to have wars so that uh, somebody else could collect up a bunch of that wealth. That the people, they, they used up our wealth. And uh, they added to the so called tax burden for national debt. And they're having that war issue and money out of nothing to pay for all the tanks and planes and everything and then making us pay all that back too and it's just outrageous it is just completely insane what's supposed to happen 
our Congress is supposed to be responsible. They're supposed to have uh, set up a literally a uh, national bank, a central bank for the country that issues out the money according to the product of the people. If people aren't baking bread and building houses and making clothes, no sense issuing out any money if people aren't producing. So you issue it according to the product of the necessities of the people and you give the allowances out to the people to purchase all that that they have a right to and then the people that produce that they get the money the stuff they produced gets used up but the producers earn some money they if you want to get wealthy you produce But now the systems of the Federal Reserve's got it, so we're paying all that money back, plus interest, and they never gave any money to us. But then, see, how should we then live? Well, if we have our government issuing out the money, to the people. So every month everybody gets their allotted share to cover for the basics so that nobody has to go hungry or naked or homeless. Then the people who are producing the bread and the clothing in that that are making money because the money that's issued out is getting paid to them to purchase their product then they pay 10% of their profits back so 10% of the money that gets issued out gets paid back to those that are issuing it out, just 10%. You see, because basically, you know, it's like saying, well, you know, the, the people and everybody, you know, is like 10 times larger than the people that it takes to run the infrastructure and government and that. And so that the share that they get back is no larger than than the population's share, or than one tenth of the population share. So that they don't end up having more money than the people do. See, now the people would keep nine-tenths of that money, would stay in the system. And those people who, you know, baked the bread and made some money, now they can buy a, a cart and a horse. So somebody can make money, you know, on, on doing those things. And that everybody has opportunity to produce and you know then yeah there's then the market balances out uh, supply and demand and stuff and uh, but there wouldn't be a bunch of taxes there wouldn't be like a whole lot of money that people are going to need every month for their allowance for the basic things when it becomes standard 
that remains the same the wealth grows pretty soon everything else you know I mean uh, <laughs> the the cost of of our food and our clothing and our shelter would end up being really insignificant after a while uh, but in the beginning of a system like that you know it's the primary thing uh, you know eventually people are well we're human beings we want to fly we want to climb mountains we want to go down the bottom of the sea anybody should have a right to pursue whatever they want and be able to take part in the system and generate wealth and do tremendous things. And there should in no way be any poverty. You know, there would be still people that are poor or simple or don't have a need to acquire wealth. They don't have to. There'll be no law that says, hey, you gotta save money or you gotta be much freer wouldn't be the same kind of competitiveness uh, so the issuing of the money how that's supposed to be and how, what should really be looked into and understood and it finally made sense I didn't it didn't make sense a long time about the tithing and what the Bible was talking about and I kept trying to understand it and now it very much you know it becomes so clear because it has to do with the issuing of the money and it was the duty of the priests to issue out that money allotments to all the people and then it was up to them who, who who made profits who sold goods and gained wealth but those people paid just 10 percent 10 percent should be fine that way the people always have nine or ten times as much wealth as the ruling class. See, now it's completely the other way around and even worse. The ruling class, they couldn't even imagine living on what the people have to live on. <laughs> it's a, just crazy. So that's two things sovereignty money how should we then live we should live sovereign we should live righteously about the money and say well what about people that have gold you know it's like well you know then we're talking about capital and different things like that that it's all part of it but right now, we should not be paying any more money back to the Federal Reserve. They did 911. They've committed crimes against the people. They're ripping us off. They're the ones who are supporting the pharmaceutical industries, petrochemical industries, Monsanto, all that. They're the only ones that possibly could because they're the only ones with the wealth. They have the wealth, they have all the wealth, and they have control of everything. We should stop. We should stop it now. We should stop paying them any more money at all. Deals off, contract broken. I mean, we should be telling them, go to hell or go to prison, if that's what you insist upon, but you ain't getting any more money. And there shouldn't be any more tax money, any more IRS money. It should all go into a treasury for the United States and for the states. And even money that's being paid back through the the banks you know I'd rather see 
the local bankers and the people that work at the bank keep all that money and not have any more of it go into the central banks and the big banks. Keep it in the town. Keep it in the cities where those banks are. And invest it back into the people. Sovereignty, money, and then the other thing, to me it's very obvious. A lot of people are still not seeing it, and it's hard for me to understand that now. And that's the weed, the cannabis, the marijuana. Now, for one thing, well, that stuff would be any good for our economy or not. Well, that plant has any merit or value, even if it doesn't. There's no reason for anybody to be in jail or in prison because of that plant. And that's without recognizing any value in the plant whatsoever. Even if it's a junk, useless plant, we know it gets people high, and that's why it's illegal, because it gets people high. Explain that. It's outrageous. It's horrible. We're blind. We're blind. We don't see. We are blind. We are ignorant and blind and not asking the questions. And even when we do, we walk away from it again, go on in about other things. In the meantime, people are rotting in jail. How would you like to be in jail for doing something that don't hurt nobody? They say, oh, it's part of a drug culture. It's only a drug culture like that because of the prohibition, because of the rules. It's bad. It's a horrible crime. There's people out there that need to wake up right now. I'm going to talk about my friends on YouTube. I'm not talking to my mom. You know, I forgive her for not understanding. But judges and lawyers and politicians and people who are in positions of accountability, of responsibility. <laughs> hey, cut it out. I'm going to hold you responsible. How would you like to be responsible? Huh? My mother, I'm not going to hold her responsible for being ignorant, but somebody's going to be held responsible for being ignorant. You better hope that you're just ignorant because if it's something worse than ignorance where you wish the death upon the people and you don't want the people to have something good, I mean, you just grow old and die real quick, like. Because that is old. Old, nasty, old jealousy. The prohibition has to end. The farmers need to grow up the economy. What can happen with that? Then we can have our cottage industry. Then we'll have our cottage industry. You know, we don't have cottage industry now because, you know, we have these corporations, they get all that raw material into one spot, all together in one way, process it one way. It's like, 
you know, unless you're going to buy a whole shipload of it, a whole shipload of monosodium glutamate from China or something to poison people's foods. So everybody gets some of it. So what's going on now. You legalize the weed and the farmers can grow it. The raw material that we will have is more valuable than crude oil, more valuable than wood, more valuable than anything we mine out of the ground, more valuable than gold. more valuable than anything else that grows on trees or weeds or in the fields. It's a raw material. It's a literally a money tree. Money grows on trees. If you got the right tree. If it's an apple tree and then apple grows on that tree you pick that apple and you sell that apple you just prove that money grows on trees and it's free it's a God-given miracle of life and we don't get it and we don't understand it and we need to it's there for us God has granted us everything we need and we can't partake of it because we're being robbed. We're robbed by a, a legal system. We're robbed by a banking system. And we're robbed by our ignorance of not understanding our sovereignty. Instead, we're taught that we're supposed to be nice. We're supposed to be nice to people. Well, I can guarantee you the ones that want you to be the nice want you to be nice the most are the first ones that would take revenge against you if you made a mistake and spilled their drink. So why would you even want to be nice to them to begin with? We've been kowtowing to popularity to personalities. I don't want to join in that mix. I hope people don't like my videos very much that they're not really easy to watch because I wouldn't want somebody to watch it just so they can be a critic about it and stuff. You know? Those people are too impatient to watch something like what I'm doing, so ha ha. You know, somebody wants to watch something like this, I know myself. By the time, you know, when I got the heart for something, I'll, I'll watch. When I'm ready, I'll watch. And I hope that's kind of the effect that my videos have. I'm saying really important stuff. I'd be out there like selling it like it's the biggest thing on earth. As it is. Three things. Money, sovereignty, and weed. If we understood those three things, if we changed those three things, you know, sovereignty would take care of the war. The money would take care of the war. The the weed would take care of the for those three things, each one of them would leave no reason for war. People have always wanted to share land, and were always willing to. It was only a few. And say they just didn't know any better. Say that's just the way they saw it, you know. We don't have to go along with it. We don't have to agree. 
When I'm talking about we, I'm talking about everybody from the janitor to the president, all the politicians, all law enforcement judges, I include everybody in the we. This world's trying to isolate us away from realities that are in our, those people are there. I'm plenty, I, I could just go on about things I'm disgusted about, that I would disagree about, they did this, they did that, uh, you know, vote for this, vote for that. I go on about, you know, I probably fit, find a thousand things to complain about in this country or in the world or to worry about and I'm talking about three things that to me are three of the most important things to understand They're, see I, I call myself a fundamentalist that trips people up ooh you're a fundamentalist you know it's like well you know, I believe in a good foundation. And sovereignty is a good foundation. So that is my foundation. That is my rock that Jesus taught me. That is what he was showing. Why? Because he's saying... The Father and Him, and Him and the Father, and us and Him, and Him and us, and us and the Father. And it doesn't leave room for popes and pastors and princes and kings and judges and police and all kinds of other people to be an authority in our lives when God is our authority. When the Creator is our authority. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what we need to understand. You know, it's amazing how that, you know, the Bible shows the story of slaves being freed from slavery and then Jesus comes and you know gets turned into like oh now <laughs> people are uh, you know free to be enslaved in a religion. I mean, that's how how it starts. Almost for everybody that finds it, you you got to, you know, get above the religion. You got to see that Jesus came to set us free. That the word church even means those that come out of the congregation. Not those that who go into a congregation. It's those who come out of the congregation. And he's called us to come out. But now we don't want to admit that there's any slavery. Oh, we're free. We're Americans. We're free. Oh, we're Christians. We're free. Well, then you got nothing to complain about. Good for you. But I don't feel that way. I'm an American because I'm standing up for my freedom. I feel like I'm very free. I'm so sick and tired of all the bull crap. I gotta go pay my 
my internet account probably but I haven't even paid it yet this month I don't make many trips into town and stuff and when I take care of my business I don't care about all that very much it's not something worrisome on my mind oh no I'm so sick of it discussing how many times I've gotten in line and filled out the papers and all that stuff all the patience that I've had same with so many of you you've gone through the same things you know what I'm talking about it's so belittling what God taught us to be humble and we humble ourselves and go through that and even with the children of Israel when Babylon was going to take them over God warned them and told them you know you guys go along with these Babylonians now and it'll be okay with you and if you don't you're gonna die so I've been trying to go along with this Babylon but I understand it now pretty clear I was sick of it all along since day one and uh, maybe maybe the first time when I got my driver's license and you know I was proud to go out and go to the bank and borrow some money and get a car and do it all in one day and, and get insurance on it and be legal you know it did feel pretty good but all that rigmarole roll got really sickening especially when they use it all against you know how many extra fines how many arrests that I've had to put up with how many tickets how much money the state of Michigan robbed me of the state those people in the state of Michigan know exactly who I'm talking about and I'm not talking about my people the employees my dad worked for him too he wasn't too happy with the real really the administration he was good not to complain and he liked work with the field and the, the staff in the field he didn't care to be in the in Lansing at the Stephen T. Mason building he wanted to get out of that building as much as he could there's a lot of good people that work for the state of Michigan and that, but the people I'm talking about, they're they're on the inside, they know. They know what I'm talking about. And they're in a lot of the local governments and on city councils and you, you disregarded the people. You milked us for all that you could get. You run out of games to play. I warned you guys, too. I said, if that's what you guys got to do for some revenue, you're going to get addicted to that revenue and want more. What kind of scams are you going to come up for that? You're getting busted, aren't you? Nobody likes it anymore. Oh, and supposedly the state's going bankrupt in that. What a big fucking lie. being robbed to death maybe you're being warned right now state of Michigan employees you know who you are bankers you know who you are You could have done something, but you didn't. You could have looked, but you turned away. Guess what? I stayed with the sheep. Huh? You don't like that, do ya? I'm with the sheep, and there's many of us. We are many, 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 many. 
It's trying to entice me away. Yeah, it would have been nice to live on a tropical island with half-naked women around and stuff, you know. But guess what? You know, I really cared about the people. I really cared about the people. And about just, you know, being righteous. Oh, I'm too morally good for that. Believe me, my morally good could probably be as corrupted as easy as anybody's, but my love for the people could not. You know, and I saw my parents, what they're going through, and I understood, knew their hearts. And I saw how ignorant and how little that they understood, and that they wouldn't have it that way if they knew. And... You know, so many other people, too. They're good. They don't deserve what they're getting. I'm not going to betray them and run off and go have my own little, you know, happy life. Be a golden boy somewhere or something. No, I live in a doghouse, thankfully. I'm glad to be in this place. If anything was any nicer, I'd wreck it a lot worse than how I wrecked it. <laughs> the only reason I don't wreck it more is because I don't make it nice to begin with. I hate all the faking like everything's okay. No, I just want to be comfortable. No, I don't. I'm going to be reminded every day till it's over. I don't want to remove the clutter. I don't want this out of sight, out of mind. I'm not trying to hide from anything. I'm not trying to cover the smell. And yet, I know that I'm more happy most of the day than most people. I'm, I'm secure. I'm, I'm secure in my understanding. There's nothing better than that. Nothing. Well, <laughs> good loving. Being, really being loved. But for on your own, your own independence, your sovereignty, understanding, Because then even the bad things, you can, when you really understand them, you can growl about them, you can smile about it. You can smile at yourself for growling at them. But you know what you're doing. It's not just a run of emotion, a bunch of feeling, welling up. Oh, you can't stand something. That's a horrible way to be. Well, sovereignty, money, understanding money and having it issued out properly. You know, of course it all takes real discussion. And the cannabis, the weed, the prisoner is set free. For God's sake, people, you better understand. It is not justifiable. It never has been. No, let's say, man, you need to look into it. It's it's hard not to get like really angry at some people and begin to curse them because of their stubbornness about the weed and the cannabis. Even friends of mine that just want to tiptoe around it, they don't want to 
come out and say that it should be legal. What's wrong with you? You tell me. I want somebody to tell me why cannabis should be illegal. You cannot do it. Tell me. I doubt I'll get any messages on that, but... You know, simply because people can't tell me. Leave in a comment. Message me. Legalize weed. Get, get on that, people. We need, we need the mental push. We need your help. This is serious stuff. Search, run from the cure. It's the best video that's that's on YouTube. The Rick Simpson story, and it's about cannabis oil, hemp oil, curing cancer, and much more. And it's a true story, and it's still going on, and it ain't over. But it's amazing how obstinate law enforcement and courts and all that, they're like these artificial little wind-up toys going along with that system. It's unbelievable. There's no humanness there, it seems like. It's hard to respect that stuff, let me tell you. Well, I better uh, end this. That's just one thing about the hemp, is the cure in the cancer. There's so much to learn about that. But one thing you cannot do is convince me why people need to be in jail for marijuana and the majority of them are in there for possession and use and even the ones that were in there for delivering they're doing a service to people like me who I was always thankful and willing to protect if they're willing to sell me some weed because that's what I wanted just like so many other millions and millions of Americans why would we want that Oh, because it must be so addicting. Well, look into it and you prove that to me. I want it because it's righteous. So, think about those three things. Sovereignty, money, and weed. Make all the difference in the world. I love you. I hope I said it. Three things. Peace.